This is uh, an interview with David and Debbie Goodrum, missionaries to the Caribbean, Central America, and the Bahamas. Thank you for being interviewed. Welcome. I just got a few questions. How did you know that God was calling you into missionary service? Well, Steve, to really be fair and answer that completely, I'd have to just send you a copy of my book. So we had. We had so many uh, miracles happening one after another, a variety of different ones. Some related to the call, some were indirectly associated with what God was clearly trying to lead us to. So uh, we had people back then asking us to write a book because they felt like it was, it was spectacular. But over the years when people have asked me that question, I've tried to be very frank about it and say, look, God sometimes will call you with supernatural signs. Sometimes he'll... Um, make it quite subtle, quite private. Uh, in our case, it had to be something uh, exceptional because uh, we had so many people who were depending on us at the time. I was pastoring a church. We were raising a family. I was teaching school. Uh, we, had, uh, we had to know without any doubt that it was God calling us a series of events. And again, as I said, it takes way too long to go into all of them. But just know that uh, several were so supernatural that they were you know, biblical uh, miracles, without a doubt. And we were completely convinced we had no problem at all uh, stepping out to do what we had to do because we were so certain of his calling. How long was it when you first heard the call until you went to the field? Well, we uh, immediately started making preparation. Um, I, as I said, I was pastoring a church. I had to inform my church that the Lord was leading us back into missions work. Now, this was 23 years ago, but uh, long before we pastored um, in North Carolina uh, at that time, before that in Tennessee, and before that in Maryland, we were uh, missionary pastors in Germany. So this was a returning to our first calling. And uh, many of the church members already knew that it was in my heart. It was a matter of time when the Lord would open the door that I would likely uh, step through that door. So. Uh, they were a little prepared, but I, it was a church that we had literally raised up from the ashes. We had a lot to do to get them ready uh, so they could stand on their feet and a new pastor could come in and, and have things in place. So uh, we began making preparation with our first boat uh, almost immediately within a matter of weeks. Um, and I resigned the church about five months later, and then for uh, another year and uh, about a year, almost a year and a half, uh, we spent working on the boat, making making ready before we set sail. Uh, a lot of times there is preparation to make in a call. Sometimes God says, you know, follow me and I'll make you a fisherman. You drop everything and go. In our case, there was a lot of preparation that was needed. What advice would you give to someone who is preparing for missionary service? Uh... <laughs> Make sure your wife's on board with you. <laughs> Don't Literally. let anything stand in your way because the world's going to try to distract you every way possible. Oh, amen. Um, I, the first thing I would suggest, and, and this is a principle I've had to share with a lot of people over the years because people have asked me, you know, how am I going to know what God's will is? I've always found God's will to lead in a positive direction. It's, uh, it's simple to say, you know, the devil will do all he can to prevent you from doing uh, the right thing. God will at times prevent you from doing the wrong thing. So how do you know when obstacles and problems are actually uh, a part of being in, you know, going in the wrong direction and, and uh, where you need to get back on your knees and seek the Lord's will? And I usually say, look, God, God is bigger than your confusion. If you're struggling with it, wrestling with it, you're not sure, what does this mean? Why am I having so many problems that this is what God wants me to do? Just remember that God is big enough to carry you through that process. If you're running into all kinds of obstacles and setbacks and it's just aggravating you and beating you down and all, you've got to believe that that's the enemy because that's what he likes to do. God will sometimes stop you in your tracks or, or change your direction because somehow you might have missed the detail in his will but just remember he's a loving God and he has a task to, that he's trying to accomplish and certainly trying to accomplish it as quickly as possible and it's God's efficiency that I've always depended on um, if, if something is not going right uh, I, I tend to be just tenacious about it and say alright 
there's a stone in the way, I'll plow around it. And uh, that's what's kept us going for 23 years. Okay, uh, this is the last question here. Uh, share something that God has done that you would consider a miracle. <laughs> I'm going to let Debbie answer the, the, that first, and I have an answer as well. But uh, One of the biggest ones that I could see so very clearly is that he tends to call you to something that you would not be able to do under your own power. Like, I am not a swimmer. I took a class in college to try and get over my fear of the water, or even walking out on the docks, and I flunked the class, which was called Chicken of the Sea, because it was a very basic swimming skill. Well, I can float, I can do okay, but I know when I go out there on the water, it's because the Lord called me out there, and He's going to take care of me. We have had, uh, we've had so many times where our own abilities were tested pretty much to their limit, and, and uh, I sailed by myself. I sailed one of our boats through Hurricane Fran. I've been in other situations where we were really in, in considerable distress and all that. And, and I think every time God provided a special help to us, it was a miracle. But maybe the biggest miracle of all for us has been over 970 people who have come to know the Lord. We're excited about that. Uh, almost half of those are children and teenagers. Uh, the Lord used us to rescue uh, people uh, lost at sea. Twice we rescued Cuban refugees adrift in small uh, sinking vessels that were trying to escape Cuba and were caught in the currents of the ocean. These people would not have survived if the Lord hadn't had us there. Rescued a man who was attacked by a shark and saved his life. We rescued uh, a couple that was adrift and uh, being driven by a storm towards reefs and I even rescued a woman on the side of the interstate, walking in the snow one night because her car was broken down, children left behind. But the biggest miracle of all, I think, is the fact that we're still at it. Uh, we've had plenty of excuses to quit, and uh, we're both laughing about it because we, I think this morning I thought maybe I'd try my hand on another resignation letter. The fact that the Lord, the Lord keeps nudging us forward and uh, allowing us, encouraging us not to quit. I think for me that's been the biggest miracle of all, and I really want to say that to anyone, no matter whether you're called to mission work, called to anything, a uh, position in your church or a place in your neighborhood that God needs to use you, uh, just don't quit. That's the biggest miracle of all. And you'll certainly frustrate the devil at the same time. And uh, I give God that credit. I think that he has, uh, he has given me a love uh, and a passion for missions, for people in the mission field, but more importantly, he's given me a love and passion for him and his gospel. And um, I think for any one of us who love God, just loving him in a world that is without love, I think that's the biggest miracle of all. Hey, thank you. That concludes my interview. Uh, is there anything that you would like to say to Cooper City Church of God? Well, for one thing, we're hoping to see you in a couple of months at your next mission conference. But with that, I'd like to say thank you for every mission conference that we've been able to attend. I think we've only missed two uh, going back at 17 or 18 years. I forget um, the uh, 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 first one we went to was the last one you had in Miramar. Every year you have encouraged us, you have instructed us, you have inspired us. The love that the church pours on us cannot be described in any other way but thank you thank you thank you and i'm speaking for all the missionaries they all say it's the same thing every year um, we are now refueled we can go back to our respective fields and we can give a portion of the love that was given to us thank you for that